guys, Steven Jen here from Top Guns. Today we've got something a little bit different. All right, guys, today we have Caldwell's chronograph meter supplied to us by opticsplanet.com. We want to thank them for getting this out and asking us to do a quick review on it. For those of you that don't know what a chronograph is, it's basically a unit that's going to allow us to measure velocity of anything that you're able to successfully pass over the sensors. Some people use arrows. Today we're using bullets. Mm -hmm. I'm sure there's a slew of other products that you could use this on as well. Basically, we're going to go through the setup, the packaging and contents, and then we'll go through the use of it as well. Okay, Jen, so we have our bag that's packed with our chronograph and all the accessories. We actually obtained the premium pack. Mm -hmm. So not everything that's in here comes with the standard package, but we'll kind of mention what's excluded as we move on. When you first open the bag, the first thing you're going to see is this big green contraption. What can you tell us about that? This is the actual unit itself. So on the front of it, you see the screen where you're going to see your readings. The on-off switch is very easy to operate. It's off in the center and then feet per second on one side and meters per second on the other side so you do have a choice there. We have already attached the tripod adapter. It does take a 9 volt battery but in the compartment for the battery there's also a little spare battery area so in case you're forgetting to take your batteries or check them. <laughs> Not that we would that do one, that. <laughs> yeah, we've experienced that once or twice. On the other side of it there is an auxiliary port so you can actually connect your phone to it. And then the other port that's there is for manufacturer use only, and they just use that to calibrate the machine. Awesome. So from there, we have these two uh, contraptions that are what? Uh, sunshades. Okay. They just kind of cover up your sensors. And we're obviously messing with a very sunny day, so yes. I'll give you those and we'll pop these things in there and get those sunshades set up. Those are relatively easy to install. Now, these sunshades, as well as these posts, the rods, come with both kits. The bipod that we have here does not come with both kits. That comes with only the premium kit. Mm -hmm. And another thing I'll mention about it, you know, it's not the most robust uh, bipod that we have seen, but it certainly gets the job done. The legs do extend. We've got it setting on a table at the moment, but the legs do extend. We'll extend them later. And it does have a level on it, which will help, you know, to get that thing leveled out so, uh, so that you're not setting canted or whatever. Mm -hmm. Next it has something similar to these, looks a little different, and these are basically a diffuser. Right. So the diffusers uh, or, or naturalizers are going to help normalize the lighting, So and they're infrared. So there's an LED light on the front, one that lights up so that you can see that the unit's on and working. Mm -hmm. But uh, basically we would use these in low light conditions, dusk or cloudy days, things of that nature to help more naturalize and normalize that lighting so that you're getting more accurate readings. Okay. Now, while this unit does have a battery in it, those uh, do not operate off of that battery. Those operate off of, diff of a different power source, and you can power it one of two ways. It comes with the basically the power uh, adapter, but that's not supplying the power. That's just converting it to whichever unit you're going to supply the power with, and there's mm -hmm. one of two directions you can go here. You can either go with the battery pack that is supplied in the premium kit, or the AC adapter that is supplied in the premium kit. We are obviously in the field, so we would be using the the uh, battery, assuming we didn't have a nice sunny day, but we are fortunate today that we are in the sun, so we're not gonna need either of those. Okay. <clears throat> the last piece that I wanna uh, mention that comes in this kit, and I absolutely love, is this long cable. Yes. <laughs> what does this do? That is the auxiliary cord that I mentioned earlier that just plugs right into the chronograph and you can hook it up to your phone, which it's only useful if you download the chronograph app, which I actually did earlier on my phone. And all I did was go to the app store and search for Caldwell Ballistic Precision Chronograph and the app showed up. And it's free to download, easy to use. So. And that's going to give us a lot more options and mm -hmm. a lot more uh, data that we can gather and collect and, and store for future reference. Right. Awesome. Let's get out and see how this thing does. All right, let's go. Okay, so before we begin, I just want to take a second to talk about the app itself and the features that it offers because it is one of the most important things that sets this chronograph apart from others that are on the market. Once you have the app actually downloaded and installed on your phone, you can select new group on the bottom section of the screen and it'll bring up a new screen where in the top left corner there is a bullet with a question mark 
if you select that, you can go through and select the manufacturer and all the information for the bullet type that you're using for that particular group. Once you've finished recording all of your information, you can actually access your saved groups and go in and delete any errors that may have occurred during your test, as well as actually uploading a picture of the round that you're using or the manufacturer data that's associated with that round for later comparison. All right, Jen, so you had a chance to throw some rounds down range. I did. First off, how'd you like it? I did. I liked it a lot. Um, it was surprising to see how uh, fast the readings came through. Almost so, instantly. Yeah. Yeah. You know, I, I want to mention to our viewers what a great job you did. <laughs> and uh, so when we started out, we anticipated that we were going to be shooting this thing at uh, basically at the just right at the sensor itself getting muzzle velocities and after reading the instructions it said for best uh, for best results you need to be about 10 to 15 feet back. Mm -hmm. So we put Jennifer with this rifle about 15 feet back, no sights, no optic, and asked her to make sure she did not hit the unit and try to get all the <laughs> rounds over the sensor. She did an awesome job I might add. Uh, not one round hit the unit. No. Nope. <laughs> so we're, 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 we're good there. And on top of that, you managed to get every single round uh, over the two sensors, which gave us accurate readings and no errors. Right. The things that, you know, I noticed, uh, the deviation was probably on the, on the rounds that were alike was about on the high end, 50 feet per second. Mm -hmm. And they certainly went down to where it was maybe 10, 15 feet per second as well. So I think that's relatively acceptable because you don't know if 100% if the rounds are completely uh, consistent with each other and then certainly there's probably a little deviation as, for the unit as well right so and then and then the first five rounds that you shot that was a, a variety it was <laughs> it was crazy so, so we had the one round that was up in the 1500s and I think that was a CCI uh, stinger if I'm not mistaken mm -hmm. and then the rest of them were just a variety of stuff so it was kind of cool to see what it does it gives me a ton of ideas as to uh, how we can use this to make new videos in the future. I also want to do a lot more experiments with using suppressors. The point of the suppressor, for those of you that didn't understand why we shot the same five rounds through a suppressor, I wanted to see exactly how much we were impacting the velocity of those rounds when we shot the exact same rounds through a suppressor and whether or not the suppressor was going to increase that that range of deviation so that we were seeing that, hey, there's a little bit of an issue here, which means downrange, you're going to have more bullet drop. Right. Uh, the last thing I would like to say, uh, once again, we certainly want to thank Optics Planet. Uh, again, if you haven't checked them out, opticsplanet.com. They do have those units available. I, I wouldn't hesitate to, to run out and grab one. I know we have found a lot of uses for it at this point, and you'll be seeing a lot more videos coming out from us yep. using this meter. So as always, uh, thanks for watching guys. Be sure to like, share, favorite, and subscribe. Take care. <laughs>